Jeremiah chapter 43. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words of the Lord, their God, always check out the pronouns. Now remember, John Hahn has come. Jeremiah, we want to know what God wants us to do. And whatever God tells us to do, we'll do it. God said, stay in the land. I'll take care of you. For which the Lord their God has sent unto them. Even all these words. So Jeremiah spoke by God. Then spake Azariah the son of Hushaniah and Jehanan the son of Korah and all the Americans, I mean proud men, you're already in trouble by the Holy Spirit saying that. Men in pride, men that are proud are not going to obey the word. Because pride and proud is a sin. Saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God has not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. Well, at least they got the message in chapter 42. But Barak the son of Neriah set in thee against us. Conspiracy theorist. You know, one of the biggest things that gets Christians into conspiracy is when you're full of pride. And I got into all this nonsense with talk radio at a time when Rush Limbaugh and all that. The man that's going to save America on the radio, and he couldn't even give up, what was it, drugs or something? So in their pride, they come up with a conspiracy. Your buddy Baruch, is, is he's delivering us. He, he, he told you to say what we're saying, and it's all a lie. That's what the Republicans have been going against the Democrats, and Democrats have been going against the Republicans. Now, the difference between conspiracy theory and the truth, there's a stated documental truth and evidence. Now, the conspiracy stories of John F. Kennedy, the, 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 him being killed, there's no documented proof yet on what happened. The, the documented proof of putting men on the moon. And when you look at the, the, the photos and you look at the, it calls a question and it does not state a documental fact. But God told Jeremiah to tell them, don't go to Egypt. And that's not a conspiracy. Baruch has nothing to do with it. For to deliver us into the hand of Chaldeans, that they might put us to death. Now, why are they afraid of that? Because Ishmael just killed uh, uh, Gedaliah. Gedaliah was put in the government office by Nebuchadnezzar. So they're thinking, hey, you know, when the word gets out what Ishmael did to the governor, a man of Babylon... Well, they're going to get us and they're going to kill us. They're going to wipe us out. They have a reason to be afraid. That they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. All right. Now, do you see the conspiracy theory in Jeremiah 43.3? Do you see it? They might put us to death. What does that mean? That means you're dead as a doornail. You're not and carries away captives to Babylon. 
Are they going to put you to death or are they going to carry you captive to Babylon? Because I guarantee if they put you to death, they're not going to carry your dead body. So the conspiracy theory of Azariah and Jehanan, it doesn't make sense. What they're doing is they're making excuses not to follow God. And their excuses don't make sense. So Jehanan, the son of Kariah, and all the captain of the forces. Now remember, this was such a, a force of men. When they came after Ishmael, Ishmael did this, okay, that's it. And the people fled to Jehanan. And they were freed from Ishmael. Took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all the nations. Once Babylon settled down, they came back from Esau, from Moab. Where they had been driven and dwelt in the land of Judah. So those that remained and those that got away from the Babylonians. Even the men and the women and children and the king's daughters. So right there, some of the king's children did not make it into Babylon like, like Daniel, Meshach, Indigo. Those are king's children. Here's some king's daughters. And every person that never never eased then, the captain of the guard le had left with Gedaliah, who was killed, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shephanah, and Jeremiah the prophet, those are who he is, and Barak the son of Neriah. Verse 5, they took all the raiment in Judah. Verse 6, men, women, children, king's daughter. They took Jeremiah and Baruch, who was against them. Really? Well, you know, Jeremiah, you haven't spoken by God. It's Baruch, he, you know, he's got the sabotage plan for us to get killed. Then why'd you take him? If Barak has everything against you, why did, why didn't you leave him in Babylon? Maybe the you know the Babylonians, the child Eve would have came, and maybe they would have taken Baruch and killed him or carried him off into Babylon. You see, it's an excuse that we don't like what God said to us. And there are Christians that do that in the church. There are dedicated men of God preaching the word of God, preach the word of God correctly, and the people in there, I'm not going to obey that. That's not what God told that preacher to preach. And there are messages where God spoke to the preacher. And God is speaking to the heart. And the heart says, uh-uh, I ain't listening. It's wrong. No, you're wrong. When God does speak to a man and a man speaks out of the word of God, and you won't obey the word of God, and you make conspiracy theories and you make excuses and you start blaming the people in the church, you're in the wrong. As Johanna is wrong here. And he gets these, all these people. I don't want to say a church split because there's no church. But he gets a nation split. So they came to the land of Egypt like God told them not to do. For they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus they came even to Tehophanes, Egypt.
Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah and to Hophni, saying, They had done well not to bring Jeremiah. Jeremiah is going under rebellion. It's not his will, nor by Ruth. And we're not even sure the people wanted to go. So, you have the Chaldeans coming and putting captive the people of Judah. And many go off to, to Babylon. There are some that obey God and say, all right, we surrender. And God says, okay, fine, you stay here. And Babylon put Gedaliah in charge. And he said, go into vineyards, oil, honey, and everything. Ishmael pops up and rebels against God. Kills Gedaliah and takes a group of people captive. John comes, rescues the people from Ishmael. The word of God says, stay. He does not want to stay. He rebels against God, and now he takes a bunch of people captive. And you think that your church revival is going to work. It don't work in the Bible. Judges showed, hey, there's a revival. Glory to God. We, we, we got a great preacher. He, he's got us out of bondage. He got us out of sin. Victory. The bars are closed. The movie theaters are shut down. And there's preaching and people are repenting. And then the guy dies and they go back to sin. And God raises up another preacher. And glory to God, things get great, things are wonderful, and then he dies. And we have had in America great awakenings. And we have had great revivals throughout Europe. And we have had great preaching of missionaries all over the world. And the door was closed. And I believe by the scriptures they're not going to be open anymore. When God shut the open door of Philadelphia, when he closed the door on the Laodicean church age. There has been no biblical at all revivals under the closed door of Laodicea. And the Christians, they have a zeal, they want to do right, but they don't want to do it by the Philadelphia church, by the word of God. They want to do it with an NIV, they want to do it with all our welcome in the church, and we want to have toys and prizes and crafts and BBS, and we want to have decorations, and we want to have movies, and we want to have a uh, 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 bowling night, we want to have bingo, but we'll call it Jizo, Jesus, I don't remember I was in the church one time, you know, we're not playing bingo, we call it Jesus. I'm like, wait a minute, you got two heads. So I, I got, we had a bingo night at one of our churches, and we didn't call it bingo. I forget what it was. But that's like, well, we don't celebrate Halloween, we call it trunk or treat. Well, I'll tell you what. I've got some used diapers, and they're just recyclable panties on sale. Some are yellow and some are brown. Have a sale. The only way you're going to get a worldwide revival you see, this is where the, Bap the Baptists forget that worldwide revival is coming. Is when Jesus Christ sits on the throne of David's throne as King of King and Lord of Lords. And under him will be David. And uh, under him will be the twelve apostles. Judging throughout the land. And under them will be the Christians that earned an inheritance of rulership of, of cities. He 
You see, we, the church, want a worldwide great revival. And like the Catholics, we want a kingdom, but we don't want it with Jesus. And we want our great preacher and our great church to do that great revival so we can get our name. And not the name of Jesus. As, it's funny because I put it on Facebook when I got home later. One person liked it. I, I, I have a new ministry. And I'm sitting there. There's a lot of cars. And I say, you know what, I, uh, the funny thing that's hit my head, I'm sitting there, you know, I, I pray and stuff like that while I'm sitting there. I say, you know what a carnal, worldly Christian would do? He would count the hoods. He would go back to his church Sunday morning, I had 150 hoods. I'm talking about car hoods. When the Sunday school church said, that's okay, we had, we had 50 heads. And I have seen in some churches, that's okay, we had 150 chicken legs. Well, over here, we had three watermelons. You see that since God pronounced judgment upon Judah. All right. There are some Jews that did what God told them to do. They got to stay in the land. They got to work the vineyards and everything. The king said, do it. Gedaliah said, do it. And then there was an uprising. Ishmael. And God sent Johanna in there to rescue the people. Now he has an uprising. Say unto them, verse 10, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. That's everything that God's made. That's the angels, the beings, men, Stars, planets, hosts. The God of Israel. I made many statements on that. Not the God of America, God of Israel. Behold, I will, God will. Wait a minute. I went down to it. Jeremiah 43 8. And then came the word of the Lord to Jeremiah and Tabothany, saying, Take great stones in thy hand and hide them in the clay of the brick mill where they dry brick, which is in the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tehophany, in the sight of the men of Judah. You know, if I was Pharaoh and I understand the scriptures, I know how much a problem Israel's been to me, I would put a big sign at, the, at all the entrances of, of Egypt. If you're Jewish or Hebrew or Israel, get out. Don't come. You and your Hebrew God are not allowed here. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant. That's the enemy. And by the way, Nebuchadnezzar will get right with the Lord later in Daniel. President Biden might be God's servant. You don't want to speak evil of rulers because they may be God's servant. We have not seen the end of President Biden. And we've seen the end of Nebuchadnezzar. That man gets right with God, proclaims God, and then he falls off the earth. You never hear about him. And will set his throne upon these stones. Nebuchadnezzar's throne. Now look at that word, that I have hit. Look at verse 9. Take great stones in thy hand, Jeremiah, and hide them in the clay of the brick wheel. Verse 10. These stones that I have hid. You want to talk about inspiration of the scriptures? How God uses men to write the scriptures? God used the hands of Jeremiah to take some rocks and hide them in the clay. 
And God said, I hid those rocks. Uh, no, God, Jeremiah did. As much as Jeremiah and Baruch has wrote the book of Jeremiah, those rocks that Jeremiah took are the inspiration of God that he put them there. Because God said, I have laid it here. I don't like to read the Bible. And he will spread his royal pavilion over them. So Egypt, Babylon's coming. Thanks to Jehan. Don't say your sin will not affect others. What has Egypt done? It's not what Egypt done. It's what Johanna did. Or is doing. If Johanna had listened to the word of God. Egypt would have been going on their merry way. And when he cometh, Nebuchadnezzar, he, Nebuchadnezzar, smite the land of Egypt and deliver such as for death to death, that's what they're afraid of, as captivity for captivity, that's what they were afraid of. Oh, he's going to kill us. He's going to take us captive. Okay, God said, I'll take care of you. And such as for the sword to the sword. And I, God, will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt. You know what that is? That's the houses of gods in Egypt. You got them in America too. But we're the house of God. I guarantee Egyptians got, this is the house of the God. How can the Baptist churches don't claim that one for the house of God? I know Baptist churches that got the house of God and they celebrate Esther. I know Baptist church they got the house of God and they celebrate happy birthday Tay Moves. And I know churches all over the place. They got the gods of Egypt, the gods of Babylon. And then they turn around and say, theirs is the house of God. God's up in heaven, uh, heaven shaking his head. No, you're not. You're rich. You're great. What you say. But you're poor. You're miserable. Naked and blind. And don't forget wretched. That's our church age. And he shall burn them. Like I said, the biggest joke would be for our churches today. When we are raptured out of here. That the Antichrist take the Baptist churches. And he uses them for the indoctrination, getting the mark on your forehead or your hand. I know a couple Baptist churches, they revel on how well their church looks, how great their church are. Come on, come on, receive the mark of the beach. Come down to this Baptist church on this avenue in this city. Come through the doors and receive your mark. And the Baptists of those church buildings will be up in, in heaven having their third death. <gasps> Got a pretty lawn. <laughs> I know people hate when I talk like that. And carry them captives. Now, he's talking about the Egyptians. Jehanan is going to die. <laughs> And the people with them are going to be held captive. Because a lot of them are there not because they want to be there. Because they have been taken captive. And he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, as a shepherd put his on his garment. <clears throat> so Nebuchadnezzar's army is going to go down to Egypt. And they're going to put the fine Egyptian clothes on. They're going to take over the Egyptian house. They're just going to be Egyptian. And they're going to go through Egypt. They're going to go through the houses or the stores where they Oh, gee, my wife would love that. It's mine. And then put it in his sack and take it when he goes home. That's Achan. 
when he saw the Babylonian garment. I gotta just have that. But God's gonna allow them to do it. It's called spoiling. And he shall go forth from thence in peace. How do you have peace with sword, death, and captivity? The Egyptians are not going to put up a fight. Why? Because God told Johanna, if you stay in here, don't fight, and do what you're supposed to do, I will take care of you. But Johanna and Ishmael went in fighting. So the Egyptians are not going to fight, and God's going to take care of the Egyptians. He shall break also the images of Beth Shemesh, probably a god. Beth means house. That's in the land of Egypt, and the houses of gods, again mentioned, of the Egyptians. That's your church buildings. Long before there's a church. Shall he burn with fire? Sacrilege. Hate crime. Not when God told him to do it. 